In the previous lecture, we have studied about scopes in C++ and we have seen how names are valid only within the scopes where they are declared. Now, in this lecture, we are going to study about nested scopes. So, let us see what are nested scopes and how they are different from the scopes that we have discussed in the previous lecture. So, talking about nested scopes, scopes can contain other scopes. So, from the name nested itself, we can try to understand what do we mean by nested. So, when we say nested, we are talking about scopes which are contained within other scopes. So, when we talk about scopes that are contained within other scopes, we have the contained or the nested scope and the containing scope. So, we are talking about two kinds of scopes here. Number one, we have the contained scope which is a nested scope and then we have the containing scope. So, here the contained or the nested scope is the inner scope and then the containing scope is the outer scope. So, on the outside we have a scope and within that outer scope, we are having another scope which is the inner scope. So, the outer scope is known as the containing scope and then the inner scope which is present inside the outer scope is known as the contained or the nested scope. Now, once a name has been declared in a scope, that name can be used by scopes nested inside that scope. So, let's say that we have declared a name in a scope and let's say that that is an outer scope and within that, we are having an inner scope or a nested scope. Now, the name that has been declared in the outer scope can also be used by all the scopes that are nested or which are present within the outer scope. That means, all the inner scopes can also access the names that have been declared in the outer scopes. So, that is what we mean here. And then the names declared in the outer scope can also be redefined in an inner scope. So, it is also possible to redefine a name that has been declared in an outer scope again inside an inner scope. That means, let's say that we have a name and that has been declared in the outer scope. Now, we have a scope that is nested within that outer scope and it is possible that we can redeclare that same name. That means, we can redefine that same name which was declared in the outer scope again inside that inner scope and it will work but it will work in a different way and we are going to see how it is going to work by taking an example. So, let us jump into the example and see how these nested scopes work. So, coming to this example, here I have a program. So, let us analyze this program line by line. So, first of all, we have our header and the using namespace std. Now, here we see that I am declaring a variable called reused which is of the type integer and I am initializing it with the value 42. Now, what do we mean by this? So, here we see that this declaration is made even before the main function. So, in all the programs that we have been discussing so far, we have already seen that whenever we declare or define a variable, we have been doing it inside the main function. But here we see something is different. We are declaring this variable outside the main function. So, it is outside everything and when you declare a variable or an object outside the main function or outside everything else, then that is said to be a global declaration. So, reused, that means this variable reused has a global scope. Now, what do we mean by global scope? Global scope means any variable or an object that is declared globally can be accessed from anywhere within the program. So, that is what we mean by global scope. So, we have already said that whenever something is declared within a scope, then it is valid only within that scope. But something that has been declared globally can be accessed from anywhere within the program. So, that is why the name global is used. So, we see that this variable reused which is of the type int has a global scope. Okay. Now, next we have the main function and we have the body of the main function here. Now, within the main function, I am declaring another variable of the type integer and I am initializing it with the value 0. Now, we see that this variable which is named unique has a block scope. Now, why do I say it has a block scope? That is because it is defined within the main function and we know that this is going to be valid only within the block of the main function. So, that is why we say that the variable unique has a block scope. Okay. Now, here I am trying to print the value of reused and unique using the cout statement. So, here I say cout reused 
and here I am trying to give a little space and then I am trying to print the variable unique again and then we print a new line here. Now what will be the output here? So what is the value of reused? We know that reused will be accessed from here. It has a global scope we said. So though this reused is declared outside the main function, since it is having a global scope, it can be accessed even within the main function. So we are accessing it within the main function and when we try to print the value of reused, it is going to print 42. And then what is the value of unique? The value of unique is 0. So this unique is having a block scope. It is valid only within the main function and we are accessing it from the main function. So everything is good. So it is going to print the value 0. So the first output, it uses the global reused, that is this one. And then it is going to use this unique from here and it is going to print 42 and 0. This 42 and this 0 from here. Okay. Now in the next line, we see that I am redefining the variable reused again here. So we already declared the variable reused here globally, but here locally I am redefining it again inside the main function. So I am declaring a variable called reused of the type integer and now I am initializing it to the value 0. So this is also completely valid. We can do this. So that's what we read in the previous slide. So here, the new local object named reused hides the global reused. Now, if I try to print the value of reused now, what is going to happen? Which reuse is going to be printed? Is it this reused which has a value 0 or is it this reused which has the value 42? So the answer is it is going to print this one over here because whenever we locally redefine a variable again, then that is going to override that global declaration. So if I try to print this reused again like I am doing here, it is going to print 0 which is this value and then here I am printing unique again. So the same unique value 0 is going to be printed. So 0, 0 is going to be printed in the second output because it is making use of the local reuse which is this one and not the global reuse which was this one. So always remember that when we locally redefine or redeclare a variable inside a function, then whenever we access it, it is going to always make use of that local one and not the global one. Okay, now let's say that I want to actually print this value 42 again. I want to access this global reused again. But we said that whenever we locally define it again, it is already overridden. So how do I access this global reused again? So if I want to access the global reused again, then I have to make use of this scope operator which is shown here. So I have to use this double colon which is known as a scope operator before the variable name which is reused. And if I do this, then it is going to access the globally declared reused and not the local one. So here in output 3, we are making use of the global reused and here I am printing unique again. So unique is the same thing, it is zero. So by making use of the scope operator, I am explicitly requesting to use the global reused, which is this one. So this is how you can access a global variable once you have already redeclared it locally again. So here if I print reused and unique, it is going to print 42 and zero. So this 42 and this zero, which is the value of unique will be printed. Okay, so let us run this program in Visual Studio Code and make sure that it is working as we have explained. So here I am in Visual Studio Code and I have written that same program that we have discussed. So let me run this program now. So the name of the program is nested underscore scope dot cpp. So I type g plus plus nested underscore scope dot cpp and I press enter. So we see that the program got compiled successfully. So let us run this output file which has the default output name dot slash a dot exe. Now when I run this output file, let us see what is the output that is going to get generated. Here we see that in the first cout statement, which was this one, it printed reused and unique. So it was supposed to print 42 and 0 because it is making use of this global reuse 42 and then the local unique. So 42 and 0 is printed. Okay. Now in the next case, since we redefined this variable reused again locally and since it is having the value 0, it printed 0 and then unique is also having the value 0. So 0, 0 was what we were expecting and 0, 0 is what got printed. Now in the third output, 
we explicitly mentioned that we want to make use of the global reused again by making use of the scope operator. So since I made use of the scope operator and then access reused, it accessed the global reuse from here. So it printed 42 and then the value of unique which is 0 is printed again. So we see that the program is working as we have expected. So that is how the global and the local variables work which are declared globally and locally. So with that I hope you have understood what we mean by nested scopes and I hope you have understood how we can globally define objects and how we can access them and also how we are able to redefine that same objects again locally and make use of them as well. So I hope this lecture is clear to you. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.